Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another No Man's Sky video. And today, let's talk more about expedition number three, how to finish that and get those really cool rewards out of it, especially that pet right there. There's a lot of mistakes you can avoid along the way, and I definitely recommend holding off hatching that egg yet since you can pump him with a lot of chemicals to make it even cooler and also let's talk about some of the other challenges that you're likely stuck on especially the one that requires you to scan about 18 minerals on the starting planet so let's jump right into it but coming right up you're likely not using that minotaur exocraft at its full potential especially if you're just starting out that expedition right now and i probably should have been more clear in the previous video but it's not useful just for movement, there's an even more important use for it, which is the fact that it can recharge your shields for absolutely free by just staying a couple of seconds inside of it. So in case you don't have any access to ammonia yet, or in case you don't have enough batteries or any ways to recharge your shields, just drop the Minotaur, jump inside of it, and in just a few seconds, your shields will be fully recharged. At the same time, it's also very useful at resource collecting, you will need quite a lot of ferrite dust, a lot of copper and some other resources in there as well, including the cobalt. So definitely go ahead and use the Minotaur since, yeah, that mining beam on it is much, much stronger than the multi-tool that you get in expedition number three. Moving on to the second tip, let's also talk about an annoying challenge, which is the rocket man. You might be thinking this is simple to complete on the first planet since the there's so many tall mountains out there and the challenge requires you to spend 30 seconds airborne which even the tallest mountain on the first planet will not suffice even if you build a lot on top of it but there's actually a super easy way to complete this by just using a couple of walls and a roof and I will give a huge shout out to Scottish Rod here on YouTube because he was the first person to post about it but essentially all you have to do is to build two vertical walls and then finally place a roof or a platform at the top so that you can create a 90 degree angle right here. So this is what you will have to do is to jetpack against these walls and specifically up until the top corner right there that you just created. Because what this does is that it makes the achievement counter to start working and you will see that 30 second timer running out. So just wait there for 30 seconds, jetpack against the walls, your jetpack boost is not going to deplete because it's constantly going to regenerate and it will still count for the challenge as well. You can also add additional walls around the edges in case you can stay in the middle, but personally I think it's super easy and that's how you complete the Rocketman challenge. But this is the easy part, let's talk about getting your ship up and ready, there's a few things in there that you have to repair before you can finally lift off, leave the planet and even leave your first system. So let's talk about the waveform engine since we were left with this one in yesterday's video. It requires a magnetic resonator and about 3 crystal sulfide. Now lucky enough, the geologist challenge is the one that gives you the magnetic resonator plans and during this challenge you're gonna have the possibility of also acquiring those three crystal sulfide but unfortunately the geologist challenge is also the most annoying of them all in this new expedition as it requires you to scan 18 minerals on the starting planet so here's a few tips and tricks that worked wonders for me especially so first of all start making sure that you've checked all of the minerals pebbles and other rock formations on the surface level and you scan for them pro tip if you move around a lot of these minerals and especially so if you're in a field with a ton of them pay attention to any rock that starts listing a question mark beneath the primary element this is a good indicator and a pretty fast one that you didn't scan that particular rock so you can go ahead scan it and it's going to count for the achievement from this point on, open your eyes up for any cave or any other underground passage because there's going to be a lot more in there as well. And also underwater, especially so in underwater caves. A lot of these minerals are actually in the underwater sections. So there's going to be a few of these lakes really close to the starting area where you spawn. So definitely pay attention to this. Like the last one that I needed for the achievement was in an underwater cave. So I actually had to go through a tunnel that was opened up at the bottom of the lake to even find it in the first place so pay attention to that in case you need a few more left 
for that achievement. Also, it's during this underwater section when you will likely stumble upon this rock formation right here. So this is gonna give you the three crystal sulfides that you need to repair the engines. So you can kind of do all of it into one single go and then repair the waveform engine and you're one more tech away from fully lifting off with your ship. This brings us to the pressurized capsule and it requires condensed carbon, which is normally easy to acquire, but also two pieces of Herox. Now for the Herox, there's a number of ways you can acquire this in, but personally, I've used the large refiner to refine three materials into Herox and you can, by the way, unlock the large refiner at the tag module computer. So it's like super easy to acquire this once you reach these points. So the blueprint that I've used uses gold, ammonia and ionized cobalt, which are plentiful enough on the planet, especially gold and ammonia. Gold, you should be able to get it from the previous challenges and ammonia is plenty enough in the deposits that you find on the planet. Finally, ionized cobalt, you can acquire this from the many caves in which you're gonna spend your time anyway with the previous challenge that contain a lot of cobalt to refine into that. So the blueprint for two of these is gonna be as follows. You're gonna need about 60 ammonia, about 20 gold and either 120 cobalt or 60 ionized cobalt to pop up two Herox pieces that you need to repair that part. And that's about it. It should be not that difficult to acquire these since as I've said, these are plentiful enough on the planet. And from this point on, you're gonna be able to lift off, finally go into space and maybe even do a bunch of other stuff from the other phases to maybe get some additional challenges and rewards on top. This brings us to the final piece of the ship, which is the frame shift catapult or well, better yet, the hyperdrive upgrade but it just, you know, it has a different name. Now, the requirements are Gravitino Balls that you get from some of the previous challenges, Ionized Cobalt, which as I've said, is super easy to acquire, but some Larval Core as well. These are the alien eggs, by the way. So the easiest way to acquire these in case you haven't found one of these abandoned buildings yet is to go to any space station, like the first one in the first system, and buy these distress signal maps right here. One or two of them should suffice, and go ahead and do a safe well, from this point on, just use them until you see an abandoned building popping on your screen. Once that happens, jump into your ship and just go to that abandoned building and start getting those eggs. Now, you can also grab them right away. Personally, I dug a tunnel beneath just so I can not get any damage from those alien horrors, but you can do it in any way you want to. You only need three, by the way, so you don't have to stay there for too long. And from that point on, you're gonna have hyperdrive capabilities as well as you're gonna repair the frameshift catapult. And this is kinda it with the major steps for your ship from this point on everything else is super easy because you're gonna be able to travel to other systems and go to the other rendezvous points and get the other achievements and rewards along the way too. And this kind of brings me to one of the mistakes that I've done, but luckily I did a save file beforehand, and that's using the station override unit. It seems that Expedition 3 finally added the piece missing from the space station AI. So this is given to you, by the way, during phase five, once you finish this achievement right here, where you have to complete the frameshift catapult, which you just did if you followed my guide. So unfortunately, for some reason, the space station AI detects this as a fake add the current time, which likely means whatever event this is related to hasn't yet started. So just keep it in your inventory. Don't use it because if you do use it, that space station will consume it and you definitely want to hold it off. And at the same time, I also recommend to not delete this save file yet because it's the only save file on which you can claim one of these override units. So hold off for a little bit longer and just wait for whatever update or event might happen next because I have a feeling the next one will be related to whatever happens with these new space stations. And this finally brings us to our brand new horrific companion that you get as a reward from fully finishing expedition number 5. Now this is given to you at the form of an egg, so don't waste it yet, because if you pop it out immediately, it's going to just give you a small horrific, you know, companion that looks something like this. It still looks really awesome, but you can pump him with chemicals at the space anomaly egg sequencer to make him much much larger so for size i recommend using oxygen since it's plentiful at the space station and just pump him about four or five cycles of it up until you see that growth indicator turning from green increased 
to gray inherited that means you kind of reach the max with that particular creature so as you can see right here the baby form already has three meters tall and 120 kilos and didn't even reach adulthood yet so once he does become an adult it's gonna be like way crazier with that horrific like thingy being on around you and on the space station it's probably gonna scare quite a lot of people and also kind of make them furious that they have wasted their eggs instead of pumping it with steroids but that's it for today thanks so much for watching totally let me know down below at what phase of the expedition you are and i'll see you guys in the next video